Hello Penguin World, so I'm the Biddy Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. Today we are beginning construction of our Nemesis base, our off-world rocket construction facility, finally. And we are going to be naming this facility Artemis, who was of course the uh, sibling of Apollo. And, well, we're mainly naming it after the uh, moon base in the Andy Weir novel of the same name, which I very much enjoyed when I read it recently. It was a nice sort of change of pace. Similar sort of sense of humour to The Martian, um, but it was, you know, very, very different. Um, and it wasn't what I thought it would be either. You you'd think it would just be about... You know, similar to the Martian, about you know, a crew of maybe six astronauts on the moon in a moon base. No, it's a proper like city on the moon, um, and the way that uh, well, all the science in it and everything that is used to then tell the story uh, is very, very fascinating. And yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Anyway, so what are we launching right now? Well, our initial outpost on the surface of Nemesis is going to consist of three main modules and this is the first one of those. We are of course using our super heavy launch vehicle right here, uh, the Albatross 15. It's a three stage launch configuration and this module at the top of it is our logistics and habitation module. So we've got one logistics module in there which is going to have a quartermaster in it and that means that they can uh, manage all the various resources of the base, they can put things into and take resources out of the planetary stockpile uh, and all that good stuff. We also have our power generation on here, we see uh, we have a 2.5 meter wide nuclear reactor. Um, we also have some inflatable modules that you can't quite see but you will see when they're actually inflated on the surface and that's, that's where we're going to store uh, all of the resources that we manufacture and well actually you know, we're going to store a great deal of the uh, mined resources from our various different mining installations as well in those big inflatable storage modules. And then, of course, the material kits and specialized parts and all the various different parts of the production chain are going to be stored in there as well. So it's basically just a massive uh, warehouse, <laughs> essentially, um, which is going to exist on the surface of Nemesis. The reason why we're launching this first is it's actually, believe it or not, the lightest module, uh, even though we have all of this stuff on it. Uh, it does contain most of the crew quarters. Uh, we are putting some crew quarters on some of the other uh, modules as well, because this base is going to host a crew of initially 10, but I think we will expand that later on. Um, we are probably going to keep expanding this base. The initial plan for this base means it's going to be able to produce material kits, specialized parts, and produce rockets, um, but it's going to be reliant on imports, so it's not self-sufficient, it's not producing its own machinery, it's not producing its own life support. Um, but with the amount of life support we are storing on here, and the amount of recyclers and stuff we have, you know, they'll have more than enough life support for a couple of years. Um, but at a later date, we will almost certainly add a some kind of agricultural module, maybe even a science module, um, and try and move it towards actually being fully self-sufficient. Uh, and actually, you know, maybe even putting a colonization module on there, which means it can consume colony supplies, which is a high-end good you can manufacture out of material kits, specialized parts, and also organics, which we would uh, need to make in our agric agricultural module. Uh, and that actually freezes the hab timers of the on board so they don't actually get homesick so uh, you never actually need to send them home so this is sort of <laughs> end of the road sort of territory right now we're just trying to construct our actual initial outpost and you can see here I was a little bit of an idiot and uh, yeah the engines on our sky crane which are gonna lower us to the surface are actually over um, the base itself so if I fire those engines we're going to slag half of our actual module uh, and I just realized that before going in for my landing approach. So what we actually did is transfer the fuel out of the sky crane, and we're going to have to land using our third stage booster, which as you'll notice is not lined up correctly with the landing gear. So this is going to be a little bit of a <laughs> bumpy landing. This took no <laughs> numerous attempts here. Um, you can see we're also trying to find ourselves an actual decent landing site. The site I settled for in the end is somewhere where there is ore, because it's quite important that we actually have ore in the location where we're landing so we can manufacture rocket fuel. Since this is going to be a bit of a spaceport, we're going to be launching vehicles from here, so we need to be able to manufacture our own fuel on the surface. We also needed to have somewhere relatively close to the equator and also um, almost equidistant between all our various different mining installations, even though technically it doesn't matter, the planetary stockpile doesn't take into account how far you are from the installations, I think it makes more sense to actually, you know, put our base in a central location and have it so our rover will be able to travel around all the different mining installations and collect the resources and bring them back to Artemis. That's the sort of, that's the way I'm envisioning it in my mind. 
and I think it's more fun to sort of set it up in a way where you can actually uh, do that. So we have a little bit of a crazy landing. Uh, we bounce off of one of the um, airlocks there. So I think if that had been any other part, it we that would have broken. Um, but yeah, for some reason the airlocks that we're using are particularly bouncy. So we managed to actually get ourselves to a stop without breaking anything, which is pretty miraculous. This is, I believe, about the fifth attempt it took to actually get landing. And you see, we slid down the slope a little bit here, um, but there is actually a flatter area just up the uh, hill there. So once our, our rover has landed, we'll be able to drag all these various modules back up onto the flat, slightly flatter terrain, uh, as you see there, just when we time warp round to the day side, uh, and we'll be able to slot them all together. So we don't need to worry too much about where exactly we landed the module. So, now we've launched the uh, Logistics and Habitation module, we can launch our next one, which is our Refinery and our sort of Industry module. So this is where we're going to be uh, converting all of our various different mined resources into all their slightly higher end things. So converting our metallic ore into metals, our substrate into... Um, I think our substrate goes into chemicals? No, minerals goes into chemicals, uh, substrate goes into polymers, um, and all that good stuff. And then we're also then going to be converting those resources into the high-end stuff, so the material kits and the specialised parts. Now it turns out that um, when I do eventually get this up and running, uh, we don't actually, we aren't producing enough chemicals to supply all these various reactions. We can produce um, material kits and specialised parts once this is all up and running. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of doing this a little bit trial and error because the speed at which you produce the various resources depends on so many different factors, the intelligence skill of the Kerbals, um, and also you can have various different parts. You see there's actually a smelter on this module, and it's conf this actually um, one of the USI ISRU modules, and you can configure them as smelters, and then that boosts the output of various different types of modules. You can also, um, I believe one of our crew uh, Kerbatats on the habitation module is configured as a workshop and that will boost the uh, the actual, not the refinery I don't believe. There are two different types of, there's an assembly plant and a refinery on here. I think the smelter is, boosts the refinery output and the workshop boosts the assembly plant output. So the assembly plant is where we put the things that we've refined uh, together so we make our material kits and specialised parts. So on this, in the middle, we've got one uh, assembly plant and we have two different refineries to refine all the various different resources uh, that we've extracted from the surface of Nemesis. Of course, you know, we're not even getting a reliable inflow of resources because we still haven't fixed our silicon uh, production facility um, because of course we had to mine spodamine and refine it into silicon we need to go send a few more ISRUs to speed up that process a little bit more because uh, we are definitely not getting anywhere near enough silicon for the kind of production the processes we're going to need them for you can see though our, uh, our boost back burns are getting a lot more accurate so the first stages of our albatross here uh, since every launch our modules are pretty much the same weight um, I try to pack as much as possible onto each one, um, so, so that, yeah, I think these are each about about 80 tons, I think, uh, each of these modules, 80 to 85 tons, um, so yeah, uh, each of them is pretty similar, so pretty similar flight profile, and as such, we can uh, try and make the first stage landing more and more accurate every single time. I think we also have uh, another curb attack there on the side, um, one's an actual One's configured as crew quarters and the other one's configured as a common area, so it's got sort of fitness bikes um, and it's sort of a communal hangout. And the way that works is the crew quarters add a certain amount of Kerbal months to the base and then that's divided between all the Kerbals on the base and gives you how many months they can stay there for, but the common areas multiply the various different, um, the effects of the various different crew quarters. So if you have two crew quarters, uh, I think actually no, three crew quarters, um, it's more you add far more habitation time if you then add on a common area um, and it makes the other crew quarters operate better. Uh, so that's the purpose of that module there. But yeah, the larger um, refinery and assembly modules are actually 3.75 meter parts. So uh, this is quite a uh, quite a chunky module, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So this is actually going to be lying on the surface, and there are actually only landing legs on the uh, on the sides of the slightly smaller 2.5 meter modules, just sticking out of the side there. We've also got all of our um, radiators on this module. So of course we have a nuclear reactor on the um, logistics module 
but we don't actually have space for radiators on it because we had all of those um, all of those inflatable storage um, little modules on the side. So we've stuck all of the radiators on this, so once we connect it all up we'll be able to transfer the waste heat through to this module and uh, the nuclear reactor should work just fine. Uh, although we do have some problems with that a little bit later on, but uh, I'll leave that for the next episode when we actually <laughs> inhabit this module. So you see there, we're just uh, just making our approach now. We <laughs> It was a lot easier with this one because as you see I actually stuck the sky crane um, with some uh, some actual struts there, so the engines are held well away from the actual body of the module, so we don't actually have to worry about slagging our own module. I do have to actually turn gimbal off though, because if the engines swivel too much, then they actually are going to slag those modules on the side or the radiators. So we're having to rely entirely on RCS here. But yeah, I really should have put a more sophisticated RCS system on the previous module. I'm I'm very surprised I managed to get that down to the surface at all, but somehow we did actually manage it. Making use of Kerbal Engineer here uh, to make sure that we do a suicide burn and make it as efficient as possible, though I'm still being very cautious here and just bring it down. We don't need to worry too much, as I said, about exactly where we're landing um, because once we get our rover up here, we can actually drag the various modules into the places that they need to be. So as long as they're in roughly the right ballpark, then it's not going to be too much of a problem. And we touch down rather gently with our manufacturing and refinery module. So before we actually launch anything else, I decided, since we got a fair bit of money uh, after we ended all of our interplanetary missions last episode, we're going to actually upgrade the facilities around the Kerbal Space Center. So now we can actually use action groups and make relatively large SSTOs and the like, because uh, we're going to need to be starting to build, or at least design, some pretty hefty space planes um, for our upcoming mission to Jewel, or as it's now called, Reaper. And by the way, um, I'm going to need some names, so I'm just going to mention now, for when we actually do launch our mission to Jewel, which is going to be awesome, we need a name for the mothership, we need a name for the lander, which is going to land on Tylo. We're going to need a name for the cargo SSTO, which is going to land on... Um, Arados, which is Lathe, and Valiant, which is uh, the new name for Val. And we're also going to need a name for the surface exploration vehicle that we're going to mount on that cargo SSTO, because I've actually installed uh, just a couple of parts, actually like three parts from the maritime pack so we can control our buoyancy, and I've made myself a little submarine sort of rover hybrid, which I think is really cool. And we're going to take that to the surface and explore the oceans of Arados and Valiant, and I think that could be really freaking awesome. So yeah, we need a few names. Mothership, uh, our cargo SSTO, our lander, and our uh, little surface exploration vehicle. If there could be some kind of theme as well, that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, get on that, guys. Give us, give me some cool name suggestions. Uh, I think that could be quite interesting. I don't know if I'm going to include like a fuel manufacturing lander as well. Maybe something that'll land on Valm um, and manufacture fuel, refuel the spacecraft. I don't know if I'll do that. I'm still very much at the drawing board for the yeah, for the dual mission, I'm focusing on this. Um, this base first, but uh, the transfer window is fast approaching, so yeah, we'll just uh, get on that. So, what is this last module here? Well, as you can see there, we have a folded up launch pad, so that's actually where we're going to be building the rocket and launching them from. We also have ourselves a number of drills, and uh, we also have ourselves a big ISRU. One of the bays on that giant ISRU is still configured as a smelter, so we can further improve the efficiency of our refineries. But then the other two bays, since a 2.5 meter refinery has three different bays that can be configured differently. One's configured for producing liquid fuel and oxygen, uh, or oxidizer, and the other one is configured for producing monopropellant. So we'll be able to produce fuel on the surface of Nemesis and fuel up our rockets to be heading out into the cosmos. Uh, the rest of it is mainly just sort of storage, so we've got a huge amount of space for fuel storage. It's empty at the moment because we're going to have to fill it up, um, but we need to be able to store a lot of fuel on base um, so we can actually fuel up the rockets directly from it, not having to use the planetary stockpile. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything on this, uh, but it all came up to a pretty, pretty heavy vehicle. Uh, so yeah, this is just going to be our final module, and then we'll, all we have to do is send up some crew, actually put the base together, and it should be able to start churning out some spacecraft, but uh, as I said, it's going to have a bit of a deficiency of chemicals, so we are going to need to land another module uh, at some point. 
when we have a bit more money again, because <laughs> this costs a lot of funds, uh, landing all these giant expensive modules on the surface of another world. Uh, but as I said, it will almost, um, not even almost certainly, it will definitely pay for itself a hundred times over. So it is a very worthwhile investment. You can see here, <laughs> Sky Crane's in an interesting place because of course the center of mass is very skewed since um, there isn't actually any fuel in this, uh, or in the main body of it, it's going to fuel itself up. Uh, but we had a little bit more control over this one and a fair bit of fuel to spare, so I thought I'd just bring it down nice and close to our uh, refinery module, which is sort of slid down the hill a little bit. The reason why we're using stock drills instead of the USI drills, even though they're faster, is the USI drills, they cause a lot of lag. I don't know why, but they cause the game to freeze for a full 30 seconds every time you load the craft, so I just thought I'd use stock drills just to uh, keep the performance nice and cushy around Artemis. But uh, in the next episode, we shall be assembling the base, sending a rover, and sending our first lot of crew. Thank you for watching everyone, I've been the Beta Penguin, and I'll see you all next time.